My coverage of CES 2025 is brought to you by Asus, Gigabyte, Kyoxia, GLI, and LG. Check out their latest offerings with the links in the description. All right, guys, I am here at the Asus booth at CES 2025. As you might expect, they've got a lot of good stuff here, including graphics cards. We are in GPU land now. Look at the new 5000 series from Asus, starting with the Prime. And this one's small form factor ready. It's SFF ready, certified by NVIDIA, so it's gonna be great for small form factor builds. Those sub 20 liter cases that I love so much. Still getting a triple fan design, however, and you can see they're kind of like emulating the pro art styling, which I am not opposed to. I, I don't hate it. I will say I don't hate it. We've got a nice fat heatsink going along the card here. That small PCB, it ends right here after the power connector. And thank God we're still only using a single one of those. And you have a pass-through heatsink. I believe this is gonna be specifically reserved for the RTX 5090 and 5070 Ti is, uh, is what they said, if I remember that correctly. Moving up though, on the line, we have the Tough Gaming RTX 5000 series. And we have three much larger fans on this particular unit. You can just see the difference in sizeability here. Uh, it makes the, the Prime look diminutive by comparison. Obviously, the cooling on this is probably gonna be much improved. Again, a pass-through design for the heatsink on that end fan there. The shroud is aluminum, very highly constructed. LED right there. And we actually have a beefed up I.O. here. Three DisplayPort 2.1a and two HDMI. Founders Edition only has the bottom row. They've added an additional HDMI port. A lot of monitors still use HDMI. Portable displays, HDMI. Uh, it is nice to have that extra one there. Moving up the line, the Asus ROG Strix. Just FYI, this model that they have on display is a 5070 Ti. They do have plans to make this available for 5080s and 5090s as well. Uh, remains to be seen if they're gonna go any lower than the 5070 Ti, more on that later. But they've also done a number of improvements in the cooling department. We're using a vapor chamber design here as well as a thermal pad with phase change technology that is gonna be able to actually adjust based on the temperature it's at. It's just gonna optimize everything. And they're making that available, not just on the, the super high-end GPUs, but even for something like a 5070 Ti, uh, perhaps even a 5070 as well. So it's nice to see them giving some love to the entire product stack. Triple fan, of course. Very nice two-tone. They're going with a more of a two-tone design, and I'm here for it. You've got the sort of silvery aluminum side and the sort of clear, it's a, it's a little plasticky, but it does kind of give a nice transparent view into the card. You can see that beefy heatsink right underneath it. I believe the strip here lights up when it's powered on. Next to the power connector are also two PWM four pin fan headers. Nice to have. Beautiful back plate, blacked out, and another pass through heatsink there on the end fan. Do we get the extra HDMI? Yes, we get an extra HDMI port on here as well. Dual bio switch. Heck yeah, you can get in there, do your overclock settings. Something goes wrong, card won't boot. Boom, switch it over to the other BIOS. You're good to go. The ROG Astral RTX 5000 series. Astral is a new lineup that I am just now hearing of. And this is gonna be, it's not replacing Matrix, but it's kind of Matrix-esque. And they're, they're planning to have Astral cards appearing in future generations. This generation and the ones beyond it. Matrix kind of gets like a every other year, or every other generation treatment. You don't always see it for every new lineup. Astral is gonna be a bit more consistent with its releases. And this card is absolutely massive. First of all, you can see that th there's actually a fourth fan. There's a fourth fan on the backside uh, where the backplate is. And this, this is actually oriented in a, uh, a pull position. It looks like it's pulling air upwards and then this one is pushing air inwards. So we effectively have a push-pull design on this section of the heatsink, allowing for greater heat dissipation and for the design of the actual aluminum fins to be closer together. These are able to be more densely packed in because of the additional airflow coming from the duality of these two fans. I love how they went blacked out with the aluminum heatsink. I could have sworn that they were blacked out on the last gen uh, ROG Strix models, but I, I stand corrected, they were not. This gives it a much meaner, more aggressive look that I'm really loving so far. Of course, you have the 12 volt high power connector, 16 pin and dual uh, four pin PWM fan headers. On the backside, you do get that additional HDMI port and it's just a massive card. This looks to be about, I should have looked at the thickness. This might be a three and a half to four slot card. So adjust your expectations accordingly to that. I will say, everyone was very excited, me as well, when, uh, when Jensen held up the Founders Edition 5090 and we're like, oh my God, it's so slim. It's only two and a half slots. But then I realized, well, what about everyone who bought a massive case for their 4090 and now are worried that 
the, the new GPU is going to look extremely diminutive in such a huge case, well, Asus has you covered there. You don't have to worry about it. If you want bigger is better, if that's your mentality. If you want a GPU that's going to scale with the rest of your build, this is an absolute behemoth. It looks fantastic, and I can't wait to put it on the test bed. And this bad boy is the ROG Astral LC GeForce RTX 5090. This is a liquid-cooled 5090 card. You can see the tubing goes to this 360 millimeter liquid AIO, this 360 millimeter radiator, triple fan design. You get a fan on the VRM right here. Absolutely gorgeous cosmetics. Attention to detail could not be better. An absolutely stunning card that is coming very soon. Actually, I believe uh, this as well as the other Astral are gonna be launching this month along with the Founders Edition uh, 5090 and 5080. So expect to see these extremely soon for probably eye-watering prices, but you get what you pay for. First motherboard of the day, ROG Crosshair X870E Apex. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. A X870E Apex? That, that, would mean, that would mean that we're getting for the very first time an AMD board on the Apex line. The Apex line from Asus indicating that this is an extreme overclocking motherboard. Previously, the Apex line was only available to Intel users on Intel platforms, but no longer is that the case. If you want to do some crazy overclocking and break some world records, this is your boy for Team Red users. Backplate? Actually, I don't think there's ever been an Apex board, Intel or AMD, that's had a backplate on it. AM5 socket, two DIMM slots, a DIMM.2 slot, plenty of power connectivity. Your 24 pin for your ATX, an additional eight pin for more supplemental motherboard power dual 8-pin EPS connectors for your CPU. I believe they've already broken some world records with this particular board as well. ROG Maximus Z890 Hero BTF. The Hero gets the BTF treatment. Back to the future. I don't believe I can pick that up. I will probably knock something over, so I'll just leave it here. Cable-free design, at least visibly from the front. All the power connectors are located on the back side of the board, cleaning up the cable management and overall aesthetic of your system. Plus, this one has the actual uh, GPU connection where you can actually get 600 watts of power delivered straight to your GPU directly through the motherboard slots. Obviously, this is only going to be compatible with supported uh, GPUs from Asus, and uh, I believe they're only supporting NVIDIA GPUs for, for this particular form factor as of, as of now, or this connector, rather. This is a wicked M.2 heatsink, extremely large. And uh, the VRM heat sinks are even bigger, as you might expect. Here we have the ROG Ryuo. Ryuo. It's going to take me all of CES week to learn how to pronounce that. Uh, for SLC 360 ARGB, we saw a prototype of this liquid-cooled AIO in Computex last year. And now we're getting a more complete and finished design. Clearly, the standout feature here is the unit's 6.7-inch AMOLED curved screen. It's right angle, but it's got a nice gentle curve there. 2K resolution to put pretty much anything you want on it. And it's got a 60 hertz refresh rate. Not only is this aesthetically pleasing to the eye and just makes the system look 10 times crazier, but there's a practicality to it as well. Like, if your monitor dies and it's the only panel you have, you can, you can literally use this as a backup display just for troubleshooting to get you back on your feet so you have a visual representation of what your system's doing. I don't hear that talked about nearly enough, but I feel like this could really save the day if, uh, in a worst case scenario if your monitor were to go down. This is only going to be available in a 360 millimeter version, which makes sense. This is an extremely high-end uh, top tier cooler, so a smaller radiator probably just wouldn't make the most sense, but you do get those three Rio fans addressable RGB as well. And if you look back here, you can see that the tubing kind of has a BTF style. It's not extremely visible. It's tucked away in the back. I believe they said that they're going to adjust the, the final tube length to make it even more discreet than it is right now. It's kind of, it's a little bit long for, for what it's trying to do, but uh, rest assured that should be cleaned up for the final product. One thing I forgot to point out is the availability for the two motherboards that we just looked at, as well as the cooler, are all coming in Q1 of this year. So expect to see them in the next couple months here. ROG Swift OLED PG27 UCDM. Man, they got they really gotta narrow down these, these these product names. It is a 4K 240 hertz OLED display. You can see right here here it's running Horizon Zero Dawn. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is a 27 inch display, I believe, 0 0.03 milliseconds, gray to gray. Display port 2.1 supported with a what they're calling a Neo proximity sensor. Whenever you get up to get a snack, go to the restroom. 
this monitor will automatically turn off, saving power consumption. It's going to reduce the amount of burn-in over time. And as soon as you get back to your monitor, right back in your battle station, the display pops back on once again. It's also going to have Asus's Display Widget software, which essentially is, is a software that you install in the system, and it removes any need to use the OSD physical buttons on the display. You can adjust anything that that, that can do from the OS is a huge step up. $1,000, we're talking about $999, roughly ballpark for the price of this thing, and it's gonna be launching on January 21st, so just in a week or two here. So I've just been poking around here because Asus has so many products, it's literally impossible to cover it all in one video, but I came across this Nook. It's the ROG Nook 2025 latest edition, featuring an RTX 5080 laptop GPU and an Intel Core Ultra 9 processor. It's using an extremely slim form factor with some pretty beefy hardware inside of it. Here's my hand for comparison for what it's worth, which is probably not much because none of you know the size of my hand. If you know the size of my hand, then I have questions for you. DDR5 memory up to 96 gigs supported at 6400, and I was able to confirm that it's dual channel, so two DIMM slots in there, which is really nice to see, and dual SSD support supporting PCIe Gen 5. I also like to see lots of ventilation on the side here. There is an additional fan on the right, uh, but on the left you get tons of ventilation, this open grill, spelling out ROG with the cutouts. It's pretty and functional. Can I get a look at the I.O.? More USB USB type A ports, Ethernet, Thunderbolt USB C, one, two display ports, I believe those are 2.1A, and two HDMI ports as well, plus power. IO on the front, two USB 3 and a USB C, combo audio jack and a power button. Nice little unit, tons of power, but in fun size. That's gonna wrap it up for the ASUS booth here at CES 2025. Thank you guys for watching my coverage. Stay tuned for more of it coming really soon, and I'll see you guys in the next video.